I would like uh, Riyaz Sohail, a uh, renowned journalist uh, from Pakistan for BBC, uh, to come on this stage, please. Now I would like uh, to request Mr. Tom Began, Asian Affairs Journalist from the United Kingdom, to share his thoughts. I am the features editor of Asian Affairs magazine. Yes, I'm the editor of Asian Affairs magazine, and uh, just to let you know that on the table of you, there is a copy of this month's issue of the magazine, which also covers the um, recent Geneva demonstrations by the Sindhi and uh, Baluchi people who uh, protested at the United Nations, the United Nations in Geneva a couple of weeks ago. <coughs> anyway, they are there available for you to take uh, as you need. I, my, my discourse is principally concerned with the, as Alice uh, has just said, the purpose of the Pakistan state, which referred to it, what was its purpose? And I believe that its purpose was nothing more, nothing less than simply to divide what the West saw as a very, very powerful possible rival uh, arising in the East. When the <coughs> decision to ultimately grant independence to the Indian subcontinent was made, it occurred immediately after the Second World War, and it was overseen by Earl Manhattan of Burma, who was given the commission of uh, handling the independence uh, handover by Clement Attlee's government, post-war government in Britain. Clement Attlee wanted a united India. And Patton persuaded him that Mr. Jinnah would start a civil war in India if he didn't get a separate state for Muslims. Uh, Man Patton persuaded Atlee that that was the case. In reality, it was nonsense. Jinnah was not as influential with the Muslim population of India as a whole as the as Man Patton was, was claiming. The decision to divide India was made by Winston Churchill and Harry Truman at the end of the Second World War, shortly after Churchill made his famous Iron Curtain speech. Their eye was on the Soviet Union. Everything, all of their foreign policies and their decisions after the Second World War were directed to A, starting the Cold War, and B, to making sure that India was not so close to the Soviet Union that it might, <coughs> it might be more heavily influenced. They were concerned that there were many, many socialists, communists, and left-wing people in the Indian, the Quit India movement, and they wanted to make sure that India was therefore divided. The two nation theory didn't make any sense <coughs> simply because it left more Muslims <coughs> excuse me it left more Muslims outside Pakistan than were incorporated into this new state. So just on that basis it couldn't possibly have been a need for Muslims to have an independent state outside India because the remainder of the population of the uh, Muslim population of India outnumbered the, those inside Pakistan. Uh, the, the consequences of that have already been felt around the whole continent. The consequences of, the, of this unnecessary division because <coughs> the Pakistan state that came to exist, Jinnah had his uh, his ideals, he was quite probably sincere 
in his belief that a country could evolve into a representative democracy. But as we know from the history, the only thing the Pakistani people have, have actually gotten since independence predominantly is military dictatorship, one military dictatorship after another. And it is a military dictatorship that has proved itself to be extremely vicious whenever the their interests are threatened. They are a very wealthy elite of Punjabi, mostly Punjabi military figures, who I understand from Geneva, some of you guys have come to Geneva during the uh, recent protests, that they are worth $30 billion between the, the uh, Pakistani military. If you compare that with the Indian military, they are most of them have to go on book signing sessions around the world to try and supplement their meager Indian pensions. Uh, that alone indicates the nature of the Pakistani military setup. They are, in fact, uh, little more than gangsters. And they are also vicious gangsters. Anybody who threatens their power, you know, I, I don't have to tell you the activities of the ISI. They can murder people with impunity. They torture and murder people, dump them on the streets, and then if there is an outcry, if the family create any kind of uh, difficulties or attempt to look for legal recourse, the ISI simply pay the family a few hundred or a few thousand dollars. Thereby, according to the, it is apparent that the Muslim law, but that absolves the crime, and therefore there is no, there is no, uh, there is no further investigation of that. So that means that basically the ISI have a free hand to take people who are dissidents from wherever their religion or whatever part of the country they come from to torture and murder them and dump them. No other country in the world tolerates or permits such activities by military or, or by any institution. The, Nazi, the Nazis did it in Germany, and perhaps Stalin did it in Russia, but no civilized country today tolerates such activity. Pakistan does and continues to be. The two nation theory was forwarded principally because of uh, the opposition of a great single leader called Allah Books. He was deeply opposed to the partition process. He was, he was a, a, an opponent of Jinnah's two nation theory. And he was, uh, he was the governor, he was the prime minister of Sindh. Uh, one of the most popular Sindh leaders up to uh, during the Second World War, before during the Second World War. Unfortunately, he was dismissed from his post by the British Governor General, and he was assassinated soon thereafter. He was assassinated because his voice was too strong in opposing the two-nation theory. He had to be gotten rid of, him, and he was. He was still a young, relatively young man. He was in his in the 40s when he was assassinated. The result was that the two nation theory went through, Jinnah got his state. It was geographically untenable to begin with because half of the state, the most important half, was in East Pakistan. And uh, the Awami League realized, who were based mainly in East Pakistan, realized quite quickly that East Pakistan was a colony of the Punjabi elite and military. It was not a, a free part of an independent state, it was a colony, and they were treating it as a colony. And when the Awami the League attempted to uh, reverse that position, in particular to, to hold on to their religion and uh, their, their, their own religious, Sufi religious beliefs, beliefs and their literature and their language, the Bengali language, uh, Jinnah and the Punjabi elite tried to suppress the language. That led to discourse, uh, that led to dissent 
in East Pakistan, and ultimately the Awami League won an election. And by the very nature of the regime, the military regime of Khan, they weren't allowing, they weren't going to allow the Awami League to recreate a federal system <coughs> that would treat each state as an equal partner in a, a federation of this new uh, Muslim nation. I don't need to tell most of you what happened. The Pakistani army started moving troops in in large numbers, and on April, in April 1971, they launched an attack against the Iwami people and the Hindu people living in what is now Bangladesh, and they killed some, certainly not less than a million, and some estimates have over three million people were murdered. Villages were razed. Any, any village or any people who were known to be giving support to the Awami League uh, were simply murdered. It ultimately, it led to a war because 10 million refugees from Bangladesh fled into India. India was overwhelmed. Uh, eventually, Pakistan, because India was supporting the resistance, Pakistan decided to attack India, and that of course was a bad move because India is a much stronger nation than Pakistan is now and always will be, simply by virtue of its geography and its economic strength. And the Pakistan has lost that war that led to the Sindh Agreement. I relate all of this to those Sindhi nationalists who may well believe that you have a chance of seceding from Pakistan. That is what you would face. Look at the lessons <coughs> that, the Bangladesh, that the Bengali people learned when they tried to oppose the Punjab military elite. They will slaughter and murder as many people as they need to to hang on to their power. Uh, so, on that note, that is about all I have to say, I wish those people to be sin and the Lord's family are looking for, if not independence, at least for some kind of reasonable representation and fair dealing in Pakistan among the states that for the states that they would represent. I wish you well and I wish you luck. But uh, I have to advise you that your chances of actually ever being able to force this military elite to give ground is remote. Only when the people of Pakistan unite against the, the military elite, only when they decide to get rid of the generals, perhaps uh, an NCO's, uh, the NCO element of the Pakistani army, um, we might well wait for that happened once in Brazil, uh, 50 or 60 years ago, the NCO's <coughs> through the generals and colonels. That is possibly the only hope for the Pakistani people of being free from the uh, military uh, masters who control the country uh, and who give aid and succor to these uh, extremists who have become a menace to civilization. That's well. Thank you, Mr. Tom. And there's an intense um, threat to our existence by uh, taking away all of our natural resources and imposing this extremism. But with the um, people being united, that will help us to face this. Thank you very much once again. Jehan Hari Koyaral, Idia Bigare Vendasi, Chopea Pasare Vetoa, Chopea Pasare Vetoa, Utrugar and Hari Vendasi, Jehan Hari Koyaral. Thank you. Now I would uh, like to request uh, the Shah. Uh, Mr. Dabasi is a uh, daughter of renowned Siddhi politician, Sufi, and leader of Hari Movement, Sai Kazi Fair Moment. 
She is living in New Jersey, USA. She is a human rights activist and supporter of Sindhi National Movement.
कोयले में सब कई लम्बे ना जेह शेह में भी तो तब सिर्फ के ना घर तरह साब कोने चलो ऐसे तो के आता चलो अपना नहीं बस इधर है ये बात आसान है चाइना सान अमेरिका और चाइना तो कुछ थी सके तो बाकी कतलो करो सिर्फ कितना करेगा बाबा इंटर सामने जो कुछ बोल रहा सांता तो आये किसी को घर मिल रहा है तो इधर जो कुछ करो इस इंटर गाने से तो बहुत लोग कमाल हो मारा है तो जैसा है तो मामू को ना सिटी अमन पसंद है तो मामू का तो मारा है ना जैसा है तो सिटी कौन मारा है समझ लो कि तो तो आगे आधा ले मिली असान था ये वेदना असान ना पाना वेदना जरा ना असान के के रिसोर्सेस हैं तें के रिसोर्स सब बर्जी खाली बद्दी का नहीं है पांच दिमागी बद्दी रहा है पसान सब दिन के सब नहीं तो ये बद्दी रहा पहले मारे माँ को चमो मारो उनके कचरी दार मिले पापा वो मान हुआ जिसे कम करे रहा जिन पे सोच भी कौन अता इम दाद बैठो ना कि था हल्ले वा हल हला हल हला कुछ भी कौन था तब पाने रेडियो लंडा हला पे तो ना हिम्मत था ताकत था मानु पाने बहुत बता अल्लाह अल्लाह बुरी अल्लाह कहीं सही नहीं था मतलब इस तरह ना ना माय हुआ ना मारे माय डर को भी तो माय इडी कार्ड भी नहीं बोला था वो साइड के बीच में इडी माय उन्हें मार असा सब अन्ना जा हो तो अन्ना चली पांडे जैनी बदला पर सुनी ला सच्चाई संसार अभी कमा कुछ